For usual living on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. It's Teaching Tech Tuesday. Let's talk about backtesting and how to efficiently and quickly use ChatGPT to give you the PineScript code to plug into TradingView. So what backtesting does is it takes a trading framework formula or technical analysis and then applies it to historical data and it outputs a value. Are you profitable or are you not profitable? What are your drawdowns? Are you beating buy and hold? Is it worth using this strategy whatsoever? And if it's not up to snuff, if it performs poorly, probably should not be using that strategy or that strategy needs some qualifications or adjustments if the backtesting results are poor. One of the reasons I like the cloud and the settings and on the daily and all this stuff that I use is because I can backtest it extremely quickly for anything and just see, okay, are we ranging? Don't use the cloud. When we're not ranging, the cloud does great. It's a great trend following indicator for ranging periods. Other stuff may be better, certainly, than the cloud. And that doesn't speak to every asset and every time frame. And this is where maybe backtesting is something worth taking a shot at here. If you've not done this before, just to further enhance your toolkit, because you could say, okay, I want to use the cloud, but then what if I use the cloud with RSI? What if I use the cloud with MACD? What if I use the cloud with a 28 period RSI versus a 14 period RSI? What if I use default settings versus doubled settings, right? So there are ways to fine tune this stuff quickly without doing it manually, without doing it visually and using PineScript and TradingView to do that. Here's some more info on backtesting. I think most people know what backtesting means, but I get a lot of questions on um, certain strategies or certain things I talk about. Have you backtested that? <laughs> that? That question always triggers me. So anyway, the chat GPT, let's use some AI tools for PineScript. PineScript is the coding language in TradingView. It is pretty maddening, at least for me. I'm not a coder. I know a little bit of PineScript, but when I attempted this a couple months ago, chat GPT was almost there. It didn't, it thought it knew what PineScript was, but it didn't exactly know what it was. And I recently checked it and it seems to be much better now than it was a couple months ago. PineScript's also constantly changing and updating. And so none of this is going to be one-to-one, -one, but with minor tweaks, it's going to work perfectly in TradingView. And even if it doesn't work, it gives you enough of the code, enough of the idea of what to do to change the parameters a little bit here and there, should you want to do that. So using ChatGPT on the input, we can just use, you know, talking sentences to it. You can say, I want to backtest this strategy using PineScript for a 10 period and a 50 period moving average cross. Okay, that's great. Simple. ChatGPT knew exactly what I was asking. It spit this out. You're going to copy this and I'll show you how to throw it into uh, TradingView in the strategy tester section. But we can add on to this 1050 cross. Like I said, what if we want to use, what if we want to use MACD? You can say with a condition for a congruent MACD, which just means if MACD is bullish with a bullish cross, it takes the trade and it knew what I was talking about here. Don't always assume it knows what you're talking about. You definitely have to double check this, but you can see the language that PineScript uses, even if you have no idea what PineScript is, or you've never encountered this before. Uh, it's pretty basic, but you do have to know a little bit about what's going on here. So it gives you that. Now, the same thing we can do with the cloud. We can say, let's back test the cloud using 2061, 2030. And it says, okay, great, right? It uh, instantly spits this out. And this looks mostly correct. It just concerns me with the SMA language that um, that is not exactly the cloud. And when I put this on the chart, you'll see. But you can even add stuff like a trailing stop loss and you can talk in bullet points. Like you don't need to use full sentences here. So on this one, I said, let's add a trailing stop loss for Williams Fractals. And then it says this strategy assumes you want to go long when the price is above the cloud and above the latest fractal high and exit. When it closes below the cloud or a fractal low, that's almost correct, not exactly correct, but it's it's good enough to test the strategy and you can adjust it from there. And again, I'm a, I'm a little worried about some of the language here, not exactly what's going on. So you just got to be careful not to just automatically trust what it spits out at you, but it's pretty much there. This is all on the uh, free version of ChatGPT, by the way. Before I go any further, let me talk about today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overall the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to your trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro with the link in the description of this video. Non-investment advice, crypto trading involves risk of loss. 
Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Ventures, Inc., PVI, DBA, Kraken. And we pulled up quite a bit here on the old Bitcoin. We had a massive down day. We're below the daily Kijun. We're below the weekly 20 moving average. We're, we're in the cloud. We didn't quite reach the bottom of the cloud. We didn't quite reach the bottom or the 200 day moving average. So we're very much in this wishy washy ranging, not really trending on high time frames, period. So I don't think there's a great look, a great read on this. And that's basically what the cloud's telling you when it's in the cloud. That's indeterminate, that's neutral. We probably get a bearish TK cross here, uh, as well as a bearish cloud, which to me is a really great sign because when we eventually, maybe after July, maybe in August, we'll get all these signals crossing bullish again and we get another entry, right? We got, we got an entry here. We got some econ data. We got the ETH ETF. You know, that was basically what we moved up on. And then we just did nothing. <laughs> just, just sold off. Okay, great. What's the next entry? The next entry is either going to be breaking down below the cloud, breaking down below the range or another attempt at 72. And for me on the cloud, that's just another long entry. Regardless of where it ends up, it's just telling you it's trying to repeatedly get you back in the trade, get you back in the trade on the long side. We saw that in 2023, right? If you backtest this, it's going to look like a hot mess because it's telling you to get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. But ultimately, even on backtesting and forward testing, like this was the money shot because that eventually led to the continuation. Now the cloud obviously doesn't know about ETFs. It doesn't care, but it's always trying to tell you and give you the best entries for the trend. And if you look at the post having period in 2020, it was the same story where we got this, this wishy-washy entry, exit, re-entry, exit, re-entry, right? It just keeps trying to put you back in. So when you back test this, it's going to look like it's just chopping you up, right? But you certainly have to use some discretion on those periods and see, is there anything else we were watching at this point in time? And there's a little bit of a, a human trader element to that for sure. So if we go to trading view, first thing you want to do, you want to open. Uh, okay. So this is at the bottom and all this is like hard to find in the trading view. It's like pine editor on the very bottom, go to the bottom, right? You want to maximize that panel. You can pull this out as well. Open the editor if you want in a new window. Uh, then you're going to want to open a new strategy Then I just control all or control a delete all that stuff. Go back to our chat GPT window, copy the code, paste it into the window there. And it's going to get angry at you because you can't call this an indicator. You have to call it a strategy. So we're going to change that out and you can also save the name and we're going to save the script. Occasionally you will see that there's, there's some sort of issue here. So then you have to figure that out. And this is where the, the debugging troubleshooting comes into play relative to what chat GPT is telling you, right? Sometimes it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on. Sometimes it's not. And it tells you, you know, this is blah, 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 and change this, do that. Okay. We'll just, we'll go back to this. <laughs> so I don't do it on the video, but there is certainly, like I said, it's not, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be, it's going to be close, but it's not going to be perfect. So we'll change this just to cloud and we'll save it. See what it tells us. It's going to tell us it doesn't like indicator. We'll change that back to strategy. And then here it's going to say, uh, you know, it doesn't recognize that same thing there. And we're almost, we're almost home free out of the woods. This, I, I think was a change from like 9.4 to 9.1 on bind script. I don't know for sure, but I think that did get updated and that's why chat GPT doesn't recognize it. Okay. We, we saved it. No errors. Let's add it to the chart. We'll take the other stuff I have here. We'll take this off. We'll take off the cloud and you can see it turns it into an MA system, which is kind of correct, but not really depending on what chat T GPT tells you to do here. <laughs> anyway, uh, pulling the strategy itself, initial capital, you can put whatever you want, a million, 10 million, 21 million, uh, or just say, you know, a thousand, hundred, whatever you want, contracts, USD. Pyramiding is the maximum number of entries. So like for the Williams fractal alligator stuff, if you've got entry after entry after entry, you can max this out at like five or something. Uh, cloud is not going to give you entries like that over and over again. 
and then some minor stuff for fees there. On the style, you can always you can always shut this off. Like let's say you don't want the cloud on your chart, but you want some sort of indicator that tells you when to go long or when to close longs. You can also just take that off the chart if you want. And you'll notice immediately that this didn't quite <clears throat> this didn't quite capture open your long, close your long. So it's gonna take some some further honing in because this this should be a open here, close here, stop loss here, and it's telling you to long here for some reason. And that, that goes back to what this is looking at, right? It's looking at MA, MAs versus the cloud. So you, you do have to dial that in depending on the verbiage of the backtesting strategy. But once you dial that in, you know, let's just say we dialed that in, okay? It's easier to do this with moving averages. And you can see there, it does give you crisp, crisp entries, exits, re-entry, exit, re-entry, exit, right? So the simpler it is, the more obvious it's going to be to figure out. Uh, and then once we have all that dialed in, we can go to the strategy tester bot on the bottom left and then on the bottom right, maximize the panel. And it'll list out your profitability. It'll list out all the trades, the drawdown, average trade, number of trades. On the bottom left, you'll see this buy and hold button. And you can see you don't really beat buy and hold at all. But again, I would, I would double check this on training view because it doesn't exactly look correct, but it could be, and it depends on the strategy. It's not perfect. It takes some user input for sure, uh, but that's showing you profitability on the back test, right? And there are some more metrics here in the performance summary tab, the list of the trades. So let's say you wanted to dial this in, you know, why is it taking this trade at this time? What is it exactly doing? And how can you further manipulate that? So it's kind of a talking back and forth between ChatGPT and PineScript and understanding what the entry and exit conditions are and refining that. And then you can take this even further. If you go to deep back test here, you can select specific time periods. Let's say we wanted to go January, 2014 to January, 2018 using this strategy. And again, we can, we can see what the buy and hold was. If this is correct, I'm not, I'm not quite sure but you'd have to check the trades again, check it on the chart and see where, where it's making these trades and why, and then refining it from there. So this is not perfect. It does take some effort, but if you really, really want to backtest strategies, this is something you can do, right? And I certainly advise people to use the high time frames first. I mean, this is the 1050 on the weekly and you can just see generally how clean this is. You're getting very few entries, right? So it's a mix of number of trades, strategy, trying to be buy and hold, and then having this assumption that it's going to be useful going forward. So that's all of this, this one today. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.